First of all, on behalf of the president of the Council of Founders, it is our desire to stand on behalf of the members of this church for the precious care of the land of the Council of Founders, the food of the service here. It was always a desire of failure for him to be buried at his couch, and I believe we have granted him that wish. I also wish to thank all our family members, both here and abroad, and all other persons who are here today. Those who called, visited, sent words of comfort, or in some other way, contributed to the celebration of Fidel's life. I am fully aware that some persons have traveled from far, and therefore, I wish to express our gratitude for you being here to attend the funeral service. When I took up the responsibility to, to eulogize for you, I began to reflect on his life and the experiences he, he had had for the past 51 years. It was at this point I realized what a remarkable individual he was. My only regret that I did not express it enough to him before he passed. That alone should be a lesson to all of us. We must always endeavor to express our gratitude and our expression of love to persons whilst they are alive. Fabian was loved by many and not favored by a few. I guess it's true when they say not everyone is going to like you, but even those who didn't favor him wished they had loved him. This was evident by the tremendous amount of, by the tremendous outpouring of love and sympathies I received at the time of his passing. This simply demonstrated the character and love he had for everyone. He was a simple and a humble person, a good soul. Whenever he was walking or driving, he waved at everyone, whether he knew them or not. Like me, Fabian was the last of his mother's seven siblings, Rosalind Alcy, who was my nene. How do you say that in English? Born on the 29th of December, 1970, Fabian raised among four brothers and two sisters. He grew up in this very village under the watchful eye of his mother and other siblings. It is my understanding that his mother was quite a disciplinarian who ensured that Fabian followed the right path. Disciplines he maintained throughout his life, up until his death. Unfortunately, during his teenage years, his mom passed, and Fabian was cared for by his siblings, mainly Irene and Sexiana, until he was an adult. His academic life was quite limited, as he first attended the Sozel Boys Infant School, and then on to the Sozel RC Boys School, until he graduated at the Standard 6 level. He never picked up academically, as most of those years were taken up doing other family chores, or sometimes he never attended school. After he graduated, he left Sozel for Castries in search of a better life. By then, 
most of his siblings had also left Sozel for castries. He joined them residing in the waterworks area. Our journey as friends and later roommates began in our early 20s. We met and decided that it was time for us to be more independent. For the next 20 years or more, we lived together renting several dwellings in the Balata area. Those years were quite memorable and enjoyable. I believe we, we enjoyed each other's company. During that period, I took up the, responsi the responsibility as chef, as the menu included mainly curried rice and stewed chicken or beef. Fabian was always regarded as the neat guy, and he ensured the apartment we rented was always clean and fresh. He eventually moved on when I constructed my house in the year 2000. He was then swept off his feet by his present girlfriend, where he took up residence a short distance away. Our relationship continued to blossom as we continued to see and spend time with each other almost on a daily basis. His journey in the hotel industry began when he first gained employment at the Halcyon Days Hotel, now Sandals Halcyon, working in the housekeeping department. As he developed and gained experience, he mastered his craft and became one of the best workers in that field. For the next 30 years of his life, he gained employment at several other leading hotels in the housekeeping department. He was last employed at, at Cap, Cap, Cap Cove Hotel, formerly Cotton Bay Resorts, about three months ago, until his passing. During that long journey in the hotel industry, he received several awards and accolades from the hotels he worked. As a matter of fact, in each of the hotels he worked, he received several prestigious awards, including Employee of the Year, Employee of the Month, and General Manager's Award, among, other, among, among several others. You can as well imagine getting a top award out of over 400 employees. That itself can be construed as a great achievement. He seldom reported sick or stay away from work. He was considered a dedicated and committed employee, one who took his work very seriously. His commitment lies in the halls of the establishments he worked, and the several managers who showered, who showered praise on him for his work ethic and dedication. This can be verified at his last workplace by his manager. Although he had only been employed there for only three months, the manager indicated after his passing that they had lost a gem of an employee. And I can vouch for that one. Fabian was quite family oriented. He loves his family, and most times would boast and feel proud of their achievements. He was extremely proud of his niece, Sherry, when she turned entrepreneur and opened her own business in the city of Castries. The picture which is seen on this very leaflet was taken at that business establishment. It was always pleasurable for him during our many escapades to Sozel, where he got an opportunity to speak with his family and specifically to, spe and specifically to speak with Melinda, who he considered one of his favorite cousins and friend. After such engagements, I could sense the excitement in his voice and he always promised her to return, to return to spend some more time or during his vacation period. Excuse me for a bit. You know. Although Fabian was not academically inclined, he understood the value of attaining a sound and decent education. He always used himself as an example as someone who possessed the practical skills but was limited in other aspects of the job. That limitation hampered his elevation as he felt he could have easily rose to a managerial position. During many of his visits to my house, he consistently encouraged both of my daughters to take their studies and schooling seriously. I think that advice was well received as my last daughter Zoe, who incidentally is his goddaughter, is presently studying at the master's level at the Cable Campus in Barbados. I wish at this point to express my sincere thanks and gratitude to him for all the encouragement. During a recent conversation with Zoe, she began explaining to me the small challenges she was experiencing as it pertains to her schoolwork. 
I simply responded and said, my child, please don't do it for me, but do it for Uncle Fabian. Zoe's, Zoe's response, Daddy, don't worry. I will make both you and Uncle Fabian proud. I have no doubt with that response, Fabian is smiling from the heavens above. Fabian remembered everything and was not easily fooled. I think he had the brain of any university graduate when it came to remembering events and people. He constantly chastised me whether I, whenever I called him for some information regarding something that may have happened in the past. The answers he gave were always accurate, but the bashing would come when he openly tell me how forgetful I was. I can vividly remember when he was suddenly dismissed from a prominent hotel after he had been employed there for over 16 years. He told me that he had just been called into the manager's office and without due process, he was dismissed and handed a check of $3,000. He refused to accept the check and came to me seeking advice. I told him the law as it relates to natural justice had not been applied since he was never given an opportunity to be heard or to defend himself. I advised him to seek redress at the Labor Department, which he did. Again, he was not satisfied with the response on that institution, and therefore he decided to seek legal advice. I supplied him with a name of a permanent lawyer and directed him to his office. Although the legal fee was a bit exorbitant, but Fabian always settled for the best. He paid the necessary legal fees, and within a week, he was called back to the hotel and then had a check of almost $16,000 on a promise to continue his job at the hotel. He refused the latter, as he felt the working environment was no longer conducive, and he decided to seek employment elsewhere. Certainly, that evening, we graciously celebrated by having a few drinks, and I also received my fair share for offering my advice. On our many trips to Sozel, while driving back to Castries, he was never a great companion. He fell asleep very fast, sometimes even before he reached the Riverdary Bridge. What followed was sounds of snoring, and that continued until we arrived at our final destination. To tell you the truth, I hated the sound. My only other choice was to invoke some country and western music to pacify the sound. One could only imagine what that sounded like, country music and snoring. But I can now say it kept me awake. But I can now say it kept me awake. It's only now, I as I reflect, this may have been a sign of God's intervention to keep us safe. I said this to let you know that whenever Fabian was absent, whether I had company or not, especially during the evening, I had to be a bit more careful because at some point during the journey, I would eventually doze off. That has never happened when he was around. The snoring kept me awake. He always settled for quality items rather than quantity. While I was hes hesitant in paying for a shoe at a reasonable price, his free to $400 hush puppies purchased at Just Leathers was all what he settled for. Sometimes I wonder how he used to do it, knowing his salary. All he said was that, Chalo, those shoes are going to last me for a long time. And in fact, they did. Fabian was never a troublemaker. As a matter of fact, I consider him to be a coward. Recently, he complained bitterly to me about a neighbor who felt intruded on his personal space over a land issue. That matter was eventually reported to the police who came to address the situation, but the insults continued after the police left. at his workplace. He told me he did not want the guy to touch him because he, under, he understood the guy is not one to trust. I told him this was a clear case of assault and advised him to report the matter to management. Unfortunately, unf unfortunately he passed before the, this matter was settled. Fabian had no children. Although he claimed he had fathered two of them, which were not given to him. 
That I don't know. This is yet to be proven. But if that's the case, our family would gladly accept them on his behalf. We would. He always said this situation is a complicated story. He always mentioned to me how thankful and grateful he was for the many persons who assisted him whenever he needed support. He was highly appreciative of his girlfriend and adopted children who were always there for him, to his brothers and sisters who cared for him. To Melinda, he really appreciated your friendship. To Joyce, who was like a second family to him. To Cyrilia, who, also, who always answered his calls whenever he needed someone to speak to and to offer some comforting words. To my friend Eugene, who presently lives in the States, who was there with us when he lived in St. Lucia, and whenever he called, would ask about Fabian. To Mathalyn, a family friend who assisted him in obtaining his driver's license. He never, never, never forgot her. Never. To his friends at Sandal Slatok, mainly Tessa at the security department, Vince, who worked at, worked at the bar, and Miss Mariana, who worked in the housekeeping department, he appreciated your love and sincerity. To Boboy and Cheryl, my friends, who always treated him well, very well, whenever we were in Suzel. Hats off to you both. To Alvina, who, al who always took time out of a busy schedule to chat and to share some comforting words with him whenever me they met in the city of Castries. And all other persons who contributed in some way in making his life's journey memorable. He never forgot your support and kindness. He was also eternally grateful to the persons who he considers as his friends. He called them regularly just to check on them, just to check on how they were doing. During the two years of the COVID pandemic, we developed an even closer relationship. We were together every evening as we were working on a project together. During that time, we spoke and sometimes argued on several subjects, including family life, family obligations, relationships, politics, crime, and other subjects which were very interesting. His delivery was always well-structured and straight to the point, and sometimes supported by real evidence. Over the last couple of months, after he turned 51, I observed he became quite reserved. When I challenged him regarding my observations, he told me he felt he had not accomplished most of his dreams, and that he had let some people down, uh, he had some, let some people disappointed, including his girlfriend. I encouraged him to stay positive and inform him that as long as he had the breath of life, nothing else matters. During our last encounter, he suddenly showed up at my, at my office one week before he passed. That day we were celebrating our retirement, the retirement of one of our civilian staff. I invited him to join us in the celebration and I introduced him to the retiree. Immediately he told me he had no staff in the marsh they connected quite well that day, and they spoke throughout the activity. When she got the news that they had sent the cross, she called me and cried uncontrollably. Although, although they had only met that day, she indicated, Fabi, she, she indicated that Fabian immediately had an impact on her life. Unfortunately, she's overseas and is unable to be here. Fabian's cause of death was deemed as a ruptured blood vessel which caught bleeding in the brain due to hypertension. Since his passing, I have received several calls from persons who are now suffering with this dreaded disease. Most of them have taken the decision to take better care of themselves. This disease is a silent killer. It is a silent killer. I'm comforted by the fact that even in death, Fabian continued to touch so many lives. For me personally, I've lost a brother. I've lost a cousin. I've lost a friend. I've lost an advisor. And most importantly, I've lost a best friend. This one really, really, really hurts. And this one is really, really hard. Although I have not cried at this podium, but the crying has been happening from the time he's passed. It's just that I feel I'm a bit stronger today. I am now inviting all of you, all of you here, and those, those viewing via social media, 
to join me in celebrating the life of this wonderful individual. Sing, sing, sing. Bon voyage, comrade. Bon voyage. Until we meet again. Thank you. Once again, I wish to welcome all of you to the Thanksgiving service for the life of Fabian Desmond. Today, you are gathered here not only to lay your loved one to rest, but also to reminisce on the moments that you shared with him. On behalf of our parish priest and our parish community, I wish to extend sincere condolences to the immediate family and friends of Fabian. Let us all stand for the reception of the body. Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all consolation. He comforts us in our afflictions and thus enables us to comfort those who are in trouble with the same consolation we are received from Him. Blessed be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. I bless the body of Fabian with the holy water that recalls his baptism, of which St. Paul writes. All of us who are baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. By baptism into his death, we were buried together with him. So that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. For if we have been united with him by likeness to his death, so shall we be united with him by likeness to his resurrection. On the day of his baptism, Fabian put on Christ. In the day of Christ's coming, may he be clothed in glory. Amen. Amen. Our entrance hymn, Canticle of the Sun, page one from your booklet. The heavens are telling the glory of God, and all creation is shouting for joy. Come dancing in the, the forest and play in the field, as we sing to the glory of the Lord.
us in the forest of in the field. I sing, sing to the glory of the Lord. The knowledge of lost that help us to feed. The gift of yourself, your presence revealed to bring us home. The heavens are telling the glory of God. Father, our faith professes that your son died and rose again. Mercifully grant that through these mysteries, your servant Fabian, who has fallen asleep in Christ, may be joy to rise again to him. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. We now listen to our first reading, a reading from the Book of Wisdom, chapter 3, verses 1 to 9. This reading will be read by Keisha Emmanuel. The souls of the virtuous are in the hands of God. No torment shall ever touch them. In the eyes of the wise, the unwise, they are, they did appear to die. Their going looked like a disaster. Their leaving us, they annihilation, but they are in peace. If they experience punishment as man see it, their hope was rich with immortality, slight with their affiliation, great with their blessings. God has put them to the best and proved them worthy to be with him. He has tested them like gold in a furnace and accepted them as a holocaust. When the time comes for his visitation, they shall shine out as sparks run through the stubble, uh, so they will. They shall judge nations, rule over peoples, and the Lord will be their king forever. They who trust in him will understand the truth. Those who are faithful will live with him in love, for grace and mercy await those he has chosen. The word of the Lord.
shall surely follow me and in God's house forevermore my dwelling place shall be Our second reading is taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 14, through chapter 5, verse 1. This reading will be read by Sherry Alsi. We know that he who raised the Lord Jesus to life will raise us with Jesus in our turn and put us by his side and you with us. You see, all this is for your benefit so that the more grace is multiplied among people, the more thanksgiving there will be to the glory of God. That is why there is no weakening on our part and instead, though this outer man of, our, of ours may be falling into decay, the inner man is renewed day by day. Yes, the trouble which are soon over, though they weigh little, train us for the carrying of a weight of eternal glory, which is out of all proportion to them. And so we have no eyes for things that are visible, but only for things that are invisible. For visible things last only for a time, and the invisible things are eternal. For we know that when the tent that we live in our earthly, in our earth is folded up, there is a house built by God for us, an everlasting home not made by human hands in heavens. The word of the Lord. Let us all stand to welcome the good news as we sing our Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory be to you, O Lord. On arriving at Bethany, Jesus found that Lazarus had been in the tomb for four days already. Bethany is only about two miles from Jerusalem. And many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to sympathize with them over their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus had come, she went to meet him. Mary remained sitting in the house. Martha said to Jesus, If you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now, whatever you ask of God, he will grant you. Your brother said Jesus to her, will rise again. 
Martha said, I know he will rise again at the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. If anyone believes in me, even though he dies, he will live. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, he said. I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who was to come into this world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. The problem we as human beings have at hand is that we tend to know about everything. We tend to know when we are hungry. We know when we want to urinate. We know when we want to drink water. We know when we want to make enemies around us. We even know when we want to create tension. But one particular problem we are having as human beings is that we don't know when we are going to die. And that is a problem. Because bet you mean, had they been we know when we are going to die, human beings would have been more wicked than where we are now. But since we don't know when, when we are going to die, we are living in doubt. And because of that, some of us tend to be so calm. It's not because we are the most gentlest persons on earth. It's not because we are more humble persons on earth. But because we don't know when we are going to die, so we want to play safe. And so in line with when we don't know, we, since we don't know when we are going to die, we are called to be prepared at every given time. We are called to be ready at every given time. Because you don't know when and how and where you are going to die. But as it is today, sometimes I tend to believe that some of us know when and how we are going to die. Because of the way we treat others. Because of the way we live. And because of the way we conduct our affairs. Because some of us, the way we act, sometimes I tend to believe that maybe we are God ourselves. The way we treat others around our quarters, sometimes I think we know how we are going to handle it when we face God on the last day. But there's no human being, how perfect you are, how knowledgeable you are, there's none of us that know when or how we are going to die. So the perfect way on how we are called to live as human beings is that we are called to be humble and respectful to one another. Our brother Fabian, as young as you can presume, looking at our own categories of death in St. Lucia, Fabian is relatively young as compared to his position of death. 1970. Till now, how old? As compared to those who are dying, hundreds. In Shose here, we have people who are hundred plus. In Shose here, we have people who are ninety something. In Shose here, we have people who are eighty something. Not a young man like this. If you ask him at that point, he will tell you, "No, I still have time to live." But my dear sisters and brothers. There's no time for any one of us. No time at all. So let us be conscious on how we treat ourselves and how we treat our brothers and sisters around our quarters. Because today, as I'm talking to you, there are so many of us sitting in this church that we are not talking to one another. No matter what we are, no matter who we are, or no matter what you have achieved in life, we are not called to make enemies. If only that Jesus, our Savior, who came on earth to pave way for us, leading to his Father's kingdom, 
if only that he did not keep his calm, he would have created enemies in every quarter. And he would have kept enemies around him. But Jesus never did that. He was so respectful, even to the point of death. And even to those who actually killed him. At the point of his death, what did he say? Forgive them, for they don't know what they are doing. That was the last prayer before Jesus died. So what is it that somebody has done to you that you cannot forgive that person? What, what is it that that person has done in your life that you cannot? And I, I, I want you to understand that there are some of us whom these persons have made series of efforts approaching us and asking for forgiveness, but we cannot forgive them. So do you think it's in the grave that you are going to forgive that person? No. And that is why I call on each one of us, no matter how perfect or how strong or how powerful you think you are, at the end of the day, all of us are going to end up in that grave. Six feet we shall all go. And that is why when we take our brother's body to that cemetery, what will happen there, he doesn't even know. Maybe while he was alive, he might have had people in Shosa here that he was not greeting or exchanging his own present list with them. But now when we take his body, he is going to meet them there. And the same soil, where his grave will be, will be dug, and where they dig his grave, where they will lower his body, he doesn't even know the bones that he is going to meet there. So at the end of the day, when we are alive, we feel so powerful, but that power becomes for nothing. And that is why the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 3 reminds us that everything we have in this world, the power we exercise when we are alive becomes what? Vanities. Because vanity of vanities all is what? Vanities. Nothing. But most of us who watch the, the burial of Queen Elizabeth, at the point when she was about to be buried, what happened? All the crown, everything that she had was taken away one after the other in all the ceremonies that were performed during her ceremony, funeral ceremonies. Every single thing that she had was taken away from her. Dust unto dust, we all shall what? Return. So I call on each one of us today, let us be respectful to ourselves and let us learn how to respect one another. And that is why St. Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, which we have just heard, chapter 4 from verse 14 to, uh, to the end, and then chapter 5 verse 1, it says, in that verse, or verse 5, uh, chapter 5 verse 1 says, For we know that when the tent that we live in on earth is folded up, there is a house built by God for us, an everlasting home not made by human hands in heaven. And that should be the target. And that should be what we should be fighting for. Not every vanity things on earth. Because at the end of the day, we shall all perish. And when we leave this earth, there's nothing that we are going to take with us. For some of you who have the program, look at it. Look at the photo of our brother. Look at how young he appeared on that photo. And look at how handsome he appeared there. When you ask him now, where is his own position? He doesn't even know. And that is why it is important. Today, in the gospel of John, said, taken from the gospel of John, chapter 11 from verse 17 to 21. The, the emptiness of humanity. Even when Jesus was there, Martha and Mary, they felt so empty. And even when Jesus arrived after the death of their brother Lazarus, they felt that they were still empty. When Jesus said he wanted to go to the tomb to see what happened, they told him, no, four days now he has been in the tomb. And by now he must have, must have been smelling. Jesus said, no, do you believe in my personality? They say, yes, Lord, we believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who has come down here on earth. And Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. If anyone believes in me, even though that person dies, shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. And Jesus is asking us this, this question again. Do you believe this? I believe that all of us believe 
that there's life after death. That is why we bring the body of our brother here for us to pray for him and for us to ask God, if at all while living here on earth, he did anything that was wrong against God and against humanity, may God have mercy on, on him and grant him eternal rest. Above all, our target is that we shall all one day see him face to face. And that is our belief and that is our consolation. And that's because of this, we believe that his body, as we lower it in the grave there, is not going to remain there. Even though we are those and not those, we shall retain the soul that God our Father gave us. One day, we shall see him face to face and we shall rejoice with him again. His sudden death has created a vacuum in our lives and creates heavy pains. But those pains, just like Mary and Martha, those pains will be taken away by Jesus' position in our lives. Physically, we are feeling the pains now. But spiritually, let us be consoled that at the end of the day, one day, we are all going to follow suit. And when we finish our journey, we shall see him face to face and rejoice with him again. I want to use this opportunity to also console the family members. For the fact that our brother ahead, he died in Castries. He was living in Castries with most of us who came from Castries. And sometimes when I go to Castries, everybody you meet in Castries is from Shazan. Everybody. And sometimes I say, well, the government should bring our ministry, some of these offices down to Shazan. So that we will rebuild our city and call Shazan City. Because most persons who are in Castries, they move there because of, not for any other thing, but because of their offices. Traveling every day from Castri, from Jose to Castries is not easy. That is why most persons move to Castries. See how beautiful Castries is. But when something happened to us, we remember where we are coming from. And which I want to appreciate the family members for that. It is not easy. You should have been looking for that beautiful cemetery in Castries to bury your brother there. But it's so our. This is in Jose that you come from. So you bring his body down here. We receive his body in this church without honor and dignity of a Christian. And we celebrate him. And I pray and ask that God our Father will grant you consolation. And when you finish and you are heading back, may he grant you joy and mercies through Christ our Lord. Amen. Eternal rest grant unto Fabian, O Lord. Let perpetual light shine. May his soul rest in peace. Amen. Shall we stand as we offer our prayers to God our Father on behalf of our brother? After each prayer intention, we sing, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and sit at the right hand of the Father. We are here to sit for his church. Confident that God hears the voices of those who trust in the Lord Jesus, we join our prayers to His. We pray for the church and all those who proclaim the consolation of Christ's death and resurrection to families and communities in sorrow. Increase their faith and make them bearers of lasting and meaningful hope. We pray to the Lord. We pray for our beloved Fabian, who in baptism received the light of Christ and was given the pledge of eternal life. Scatter the darkness now, lead him over the waters of death, and share with him the joys of your kingdom. We pray to the Lord. For the sorrowing family, relatives, and friends, that they may be assured of Christ's closeness to them in their sorrow 
and find strength and comfort through their faith in the eternal life granted to us in Jesus Christ. Fill the emptiness in our hearts with the presence of everlasting love. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all the sick and shutting of the community, that they may be consoled, blessed, and strengthened in their faith, so that they may be in union with Jesus' suffering. We pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all of us here today, that the memory of our brother whom we loved inspires us with a renewed love for our brothers and sisters. We pray to the Lord. Lord God, give us our peace and heal our souls. Hear the prayers of the Redeemer Jesus Christ and the voices of your people whose lives were purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Forgive the sins of all who sleep in Christ and grant them a place in the kingdom through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. At this time, we take up our collection. During the collection, we sing Wings of a Dove, middle page of your booklet.
we shall now have the signing of the register. During this time, we shall have a special rendition by Glenn Henry. Witnesses, you come up one at a time to sign the register as your name is called. Charles Alsey. Irene Charles. Emmanuel Roger de Turville.
Let us all stand for the final blessing and commendation. With longing for the coming of God's kingdom, let us all offer our prayers to our Father. As you say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, that we be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother. May our fair way express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. Death does not mean the end of love. No matter how much time has passed, we will always remember how they loved us. We now sing, we remember how you loved us. Middle page of your booklet. Immediate family members come around him, please, for the final blessing. Our response shall be receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Saints of God, come to his aid. Hasten to meet him, angels of the Lord. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. May Christ who called you take you to himself. May angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother Fabian. In the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestow upon him in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn to us, us and listen to our prayers. Open the gate of paradise to your servants and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurance of faith until we all meet in Christ and now with you and with our brother forever through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the angels lead you into paradise 
May the martyrs come to welcome you and take you to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. May the choirs of angels welcome you and lead you to the bosom of Abraham and where Lazarus is poor no longer. May you find eternal rest. Whoever believes in me, even though that person dies, shall live. I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. In peace, let us take our brother to his place of rest. The family members wish to thank you for the outpouring of love expressed to them during this period of grief. Your support and contribution will forever be remembered. Please keep them in your prayer along their journey to healing. You are invited to continue the celebration with the family at the All Boys School and Reunion after the burial. Our recessional hymn, This World is Not My Home. treasure 